So you wanna go hard? So you wanna be the greatest? Your life is a fantasy, and it's all for the taking. Cause this time is down, and I gotta get it. I'm a beast, I'm a freak when it comes to winning. Eyes on the prize, I get all of it. Hey, it's Josh Jacobs, and you're listening to Fantasy Football Counseling. Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counselor. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the studio. Tim is here with us. It's new. It's brand new. We just do it. <laughs> Tim is excited. We got a huge episode for you. By the way, it's primetime football season now. We're getting into oh, it. Oh, baby. It's like just over a month away. <laughs> We're almost there. We're in the new studio. Tim, I'm excited. We are talking fantasy football sleepers, and Tim and I have assembled a list. We've got one player for every single team that we're going to share with you. He's got one, I've got one. Now there might we didn't go over our notes prior to this, so there might be some crossover on some players. Oh, there should be. Yeah. There sure as hell should be. <laughs> Definitely, Tim. So I'm excited before we get into this guys, a couple of things. Make sure you guys smash thumbs up. It really helps the channel a lot. We appreciate it. And of course, guys, make sure you guys get the 16 round draft solution. We've linked it here below. I'm going to give you guys the major, major competitive unfair advantage over the competition, Tim. 16 rounds, the first ever video training linked below here on the YouTube channel. And of course, head on over to thefantasyfootballcounselor.com. Also, Tim, we've teamed up with Manscaped. Did you know that? Ooh, Manscaping. I need some. Yeah, so here's the deal. A lot of people have, you know, reached out to me. Joe, the Manscaped, that's a cool product, this and that. And, you know, I reached out to them and we we talked talked to Manscaped. And bottom line is we give you guys 20% off. Nice. That's pretty good. So go to manscaped.com. You got to use the promo code shower lion. <laughs> it's original, isn't it? Yeah. Because I'm always doing the shower rants. If you guys aren't watching the shower rants on my Instagram, make sure you guys tune in there. But make sure you guys go to manscaped.com. Use promo code shower lion. Lowercase upon checkout. And you get to save 20%. You get to shave your balls like a champ. Sweet. It doesn't cut you, Tim. That's good. I need it for my head and downstairs. I've tried it because it's such a sensitive area there, and you don't want to cut anything. You don't want to nick anything. So manscaped.com. Head on over there, guys. Use promo code Shower lion upon checkout. All right, let's talk about this. Let's go. We're going to go through A to Z, Tim. Now, you've got a, you want to start off with Arizona. Who is your sleeper for the Cardinals? There's going to be a big debate because I briefly looked over his list. I didn't look at all the players, but I looked at <clears throat> briefly, and there's a, there's going to be a, some arguing today. Well, let, let's get one thing out of the way, first of all. To me, there's no way a sleeper is on every team. Uh, for me, sure. a sleeper is like a huge jump in from his ADP to where he finishes. So I'm not talking only four or five positions. You know, if he goes 350th and he finishes 345th, right? that's not a sleeper. I need to see a massive, massive jump. So, so some of these guys, I'm just kind of throwing in there as guys that, you know, could be a backup. And if something happens to the number one, they're going to get a huge jump. I, I don't take a lot of these guys as true sleepers to me. So Tim's definition of sleeper is different from other people's definitions of sleeper. So basically, what is a sleeper? It's a guy that is being drafted later mm-hmm. than where he should be drafted, and he's going to perform better than his ADP, essentially. But it has to be a lot. Tim a wants a lot better. So Tim wants a significant, significant yes. jump from his ADP in regards to performance. With me, I mean, three to four rounds is fair. So for example, T.Y. Hilton, you know, he's, you know, fifth round pick right now, right? So where is he going to finish? Is he going to finish top 10 potentially? I consider him a sleeper fifth round, you know. Again, it's kind of like how you kind of gauge this, right? So let's go through every team. We're going to go through a sleeper on every team. I, I, I disagree with you. I think there should be a sleeper on every team. I went through every team. There is a couple ones that I'm kind of questioning it. Now, there are some rookie sleepers. They count as well, Tim. We're including mm-hmm. them here mm-hmm. as well because their ADP is really low. For example, I think Michael Pittman, he's sitting, what, like 64? Fifth, I'm looking at it right now. 65th amongst wide receivers in the rankings. He's sometimes going undrafted, but he was drafted first by the Colts. So that's a perfect example of a rookie sleeper. We're going to get into that. So let's start off with Arizona here. Who is your sleeper for the Arizona Cardinals ball? So, so for this one, I'm going to throw out Christian Kirk. So he's arguably the wide receiver two. I know you could make a case for Fitzgerald there as well. But no, to me, he's WR2. He's going mid-11, I see. So to me, it's an easy pickup. He should easily outperform that. Yeah, you know, I'm not sold on the wide receivers for the Cardinals. You guys know that. There's just too many mouths to feed. But I can agree with this one because Kirk has that rapport 
with Kyler Murray. 107 targets last year for Kirk. And this was a guy that was the wide receiver too, technically, to uh, Larry Fitzgerald. And again, Larry Fitzgerald is going to be used. I just don't think he's going to be used as much. There is talk about maybe Hopkins getting force-fed the ball a lot in double coverage. But my question is, can Kyler Murray thread the needle? If not, if he sees the guy that he's got rapport with in Kirk, could be uh, could be a sleeper there for you. Again, not bad. Yeah, that's my guy. Not bad. I got. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper here. Now I've done a lot of research on this guy. The guy I'm talking about is Eno Benjamin. Now this guy was drafted in the seventh round. Hopefully he makes a team. Hopefully he's there. Uh, Eno Benjamin, seventh round by the Cardinals. He's out of Arizona State, so he's an Arizona boy, similar to Philip Lindsay being in the Denver area. You know, you're going to get that same type of love from the crowd and and the fans from Eno Benjamin. Now he's a violent runner. I've watched the tape on him. He's pretty shifty, and he can catch the ball in the backfield. He has put up numbers that you know solidify him as a potential workhorse if need be. And he's got a nose for the end zone. So again, I've watched him play. He's very physical, and I think he's better. He's a better pure runner than Kenyon Drake would be. It'd be interesting to see if he gets integrated. How much he gets integrated? If he eventually. You never know. Could take the job from Drake if Drake gets hurt. You never know. I think he's a big-time sleeper. You can get this guy for free with your last pick. Everyone's sleeping on him, and I love him. You're a Drake hater, though. I'm a Drake hater, so this is a little bit biased. (laughs) I want to say that this is a little bit biased. Yeah, you're a Drake hater, and once again, though, that's that kind of thing where if Drake goes down for whatever reason, is unable to perform, blah, 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 we know how he was last year. He was very up and down. So Edo's right there to help him. Yeah, now a lot of people say Chase Edmonds. I want to just clarify this. Chase Edmonds was part of the old system, and I just don't think Kingsbury's a guy that really wants to run the old system or have some of those old running backs come back. Again, I'm I'm kind of sold on Eno being the guy. Okay, right on. Okay, so let's move on here. Moving on to Atlanta. Let's get yours first. All right. I don't know if you have the same guy, but I'm going. And again, he's not really a sleeper because he's still kind of being picked up. But you can get him, you know, after the sixth, seventh round. So I I consider him a bit of a sleeper because I couldn't find a sleeper here that I like because I really want to draft my Ryan, my Gurley, my Julio, maybe even a Ridley. I won't even look at a sleeper. But Hayden Hurst here. Do you have the same guy? You don't have because Hayden. everybody knows I'm super high on Hayden Hurst. Like every episode we've done, yeah. if we're talking tight ends, I'm talking Hayden Hurst. And I do believe, yes, if he's going round six or seven, you're nuts. This guy is going to be one of the top tight ends. I don't doubt it. So he is definitely a viable sleeper in that sense. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I couldn't find a sleeper here. So, you know, he's not really a sleeper, but I, I like him. I think still people will be sleeping on because they're going to get, you know, their top, your Kelsey, your Ertz, all those guys are going to be coming off your Kittle. And, you know, Mark Andrews, I think this guy's still going to fall a little bit under the radar. I think he's going to beat some of those guys, though. That's why Could I'm be. saying he's a sleeper because he's going to outperform, <laughs> I think, a couple of these guys that are going well before him. He could be. Um, I've kind of just thrown in some Ito Smith and Brian Hill here uh, because I'm not sold on Gurley. Fair enough. That's where we're going to debate. <laughs> Gurley's the workhorse, but I definitely see if they try to preserve him. I think Brian Hill is going to be the step up guy based on what we've seen last year. That's kind of my point here. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not sold on Gurley at all. So. Yeah, I just don't know if he's got it in him anymore. I mean, super talented player when he's on the field, but I'm concerned about the health and the knee. Everybody knows. I love Todd Gurley. You see that video I did with him? If you guys aren't following Insta, make sure you guys follow at Fantasy Football Council. You're missing a lot of the action there. Uh, I did this video where, you know, Todd Gurley is on this, like, it's like a medicine ball, but it's smaller. And he's on there and he's balancing and he's moving the kettlebell around the knee. And I'm and I'm watching this and I'm getting anxiety. Don't hurt the knee. I hope you're doing a good job to the knee because I'm not really a physical therapist or anything like that. I hope you're doing something good to the knee because it didn't look too good. He looked like he was going to pop it or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the Baltimore Ravens. Who do you got here? Okay, so on a run first quarterback, I'm saying just take a chance on Boykin or Sneed for the value. I mean, they're virtually undrafted. I, I really do don't find a sleeper on Baltimore. This is a run first team, run first quarterback. Years to wow me, Tim, and guess what? I'm not wowed. So when I'm looking at a guy like, you know, like you said, Sneed or someone like that, I don't I don't like it. Now they did draft Devin Duvray in the third round. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. Uh, but he's a rookie wide receiver. But again, when you look at these guys, I don't see the volume there because they're going to run the ball a lot. You know, Lamar likes to run the ball a lot, so I'm just not seeing a lot of volume here for these guys. I, I couldn't find a sleeper here, so I just went with Devin the rookie because I see the ceiling. The other guy is not wowed. And same sort of reasoning, yeah. Just, yeah. just uh, uh, you know, throw a receiver in there because they're not going to do well to begin with, right. but maybe they will they should outperform where they're going or if they're even going at all. Right. Now, Baltimore, I mean, sorry, Buffalo is interesting here, Tim. Now, I got Zach Moss here. Who do you have? I have John Brown. 
See, again, you go for these guys that are just kind of boring, but Brown could be a safe guy. You can flex, but to me, Zach Moss, I go for the ceiling guys. Again, Singletary was supposed to be the workhorse guy, but he wasn't. He just, I don't think he will be. He's more of a smaller you know, guy. Zach Moss already come out and said he's going to run over people in the NFL, which could work against him as they're going to try <laughs> yeah. to put a target on Zach Moss. Smash him in a- the mouth. A.K.A. Moss Boss, he's calling himself. Drawing comparisons to Marshawn Lynch. Very aggressive, Moss violent. Boss. I don't know. We're going to have to see. But either way, man, as a late round sleeper, I like him. I, I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean, once again, this is like a, a team that just doesn't have it offensively. There's no real yeah. superstars. Well, they did pick up one, but that's not enough to make the team superstars so yeah going with a guy like john brown you know i just i'm not thrilled with him but i can see him easily outperforming his numbers because it doesn't take much to outperform when you're being drafted that late i don't feel the same way with you about singletary i think singletary is their guy i think he's going to stay where he needs to be Uh, but nothing really excites me with buffalo uh, other than josh allen josh (laughs) allen's exciting Diggs again i question the volume because allen's got that rapport with both beasley and brown so a lot of question marks around that offense i do like allen though and you know i'm staying away from singletary and of course uh, zach moss unless i get zach moss later could be very appealing later okay all right Carolina, to me, this is a no-brainer, sitting 57th amongst wide receivers here. Could have boom-busty type games. They're going to be playing them a lot in DFS. Uh, Robbie Anderson here. Yeah, I agree. I have Robbie Anderson. We agree. I mean, why not? He was a wide receiver, one of the Jets. Jets, not a perfect example of where you can showcase your talents. So, Robbie Anderson. Let's move on. Pretty simple. Actually, Teddy Bridgewater as well is worth a mention here because he is a quarterback that could be pretty efficient in the system. You never know. I think everyone's sleeping on Bridgewater. Could be a viable backup quarterback with potential quarterback one status. You never know. Yeah, yeah. All right, Bears. I mean, this one's easy for me. Montgomery, I'm all over it. Round five for a full workhorse running back. Are we going to argue this again? I, I'm just, I'm still not sold on Montgomery. And I know you were on him big time last year and he was underperforming and then he started getting some work. I just, I still don't see it with Montgomery. I'm not happy with him. I'm not taking him. Fifth round, Maybe. I, I might be enticed to take. Well, that him. he's a full workhorse running back. It depends on which running backs I get in two, three, and four. Okay, you're a math guy. You know, you you, you crunch numbers all the time. So let's just talk about this. Montgomery, 887 yards, 3.6 yards per carry ish, mm, right? Not very good. Six touchdowns, but understand 240 attempts. That is with Nagy trying to be cute, taking him out on third downs, on third and ones. And, of course, he has worked on his top end speed. He's actually in better shape than he was last year. So maybe this year is a year that he could actually break out. So not only is he a sleeper, but he's a potential massive breakout. I like it. I like the upside, especially if Nick Foles comes in. And and Mitch Trubisky's come out and said, this is my offense. I'm going to improve my game. So, I, you know, he's on a short leash. We know Mitch Trubisky's going to show Nagy's on a short leash. I think, and Montgomery has to get the volume. They got to run the ball if they want to succeed. The three six yards per carry though is really worrisome. That is a very horrible. I think it's three point six or three point eight. It wasn't that good either yeah, way. It's I not look. good. So even if he gets more attempts but stays at that same yards per carry, it's not going to be a huge improvement. What he would need to improve would be touchdowns. Yeah, I think it was like three point seven. Either way, Montgomery's my sleeper. Moving on to the Bengals. Whoa! I could, whoa. Oh, oh, I thought you were agreeing with me. Whoa. Whoa. I was. Hell I was, no! <laughs> I presupposed you agreed with me. Tariq Cohen. You, really? You love Tariq, don't you? I hate that you guy. Love I Tariq. hate that. Can we let's move on to the Bengals? I, that's why I was skipping this. I'm actually wearing a Bears hat and I, I don't like Cohen. <laughs> okay. He is uh he is a pest. All right, Bengals here. I couldn't find another sleeper here because I'm staying away from the suspect offense. But the rookie here, wide receiver, and we know AJ Green was not, you know, years to wow us. We haven't wowed as of late. You know, injury is always a concern. But I'm looking at T. Higgins here, a wide receiver. Mm. You know, he's he, he's got some upside here because he could develop that rapport with Burrow. I'm excited. I think Higgins could, it, down the road, Dynasty, I like him. What do you think? Why? Why are you not looking at Tyler Boyd? I'm not Over 200 points the last two years. I know. I don't look at guys that are boring. I look, I, I'd i rather get this guy yeah. super late. I think this might be one of the good ones. He's one of my actual earlier picks. He's, right. he's going typically around 7-8. I think he can easily outperform that. So my thought process is, and here's the thing, right? I always try to aim for wide receiver ones. I aim high on the depth chart. So Boyd is a guy I would never really look at. Now, if I'm looking at a wide receiver too, I look at a high volume guy like Deontay Johnson who could get a lot of volume with a guy like Big Ben. So Boyd doesn't really appeal to me on the radar because I'm looking at a guy that's like, eh, you know, new quarterback. Is it going to be green? What's going to... I don't know. I just don't trust the situation, so I'm staying away. Mm, okay. All right, moving on here. The Browns. The Browns. I mean, there's so many guys here. Like, this has become such a powerful, or what should be a powerful offense. It yeah. hasn't really worked out that way, but um, I got Hooper. 
You know, he, I don't know, man. I'm not. He's so going. Like, he's going so late. I think they're keeping Najoiku the there, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. I don't know. You know, and then you got Landry, you got Kareem Hunt catching the ball backfield. So I've got Kareem Hunt because again, he outscored. And I sound like a broken record. How many times? How many games did he outscored? I've, I believe with you on this one, though. I feel six, the same way. Six out of the eight games he outscored Nick Chubb last year in PPR. So I'm not counting him out. Now they're saying Stefanski's in now. He's going to run Chubb. He's going to run. I, I get you know Chubb's going to get his volume, but am I investing a late first round, early second round pick on Nick Chubb? No. I'm out on that one. Let's move on here. Uh, Dallas. Now, there wasn't really a sleeper I caught here. Let's move through this one quickly. Rookie C.D. Lamb. But again, he's got to contend with Cooper and Gallup. Who do you got as a sleeper? I got Jarwin. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm not thrilled with a tight end on the Cowboys, but whatever. I got I'm, Blake Jarwin. You know, I'm hearing a lot of buzz about him. But again, you're contending with a lot of volume, a lot of targets that, yes. that are going to go around. So there's too many mouths to feed for me on that one. Broncos here. This is a simple one for me. Drew Locke. I get him wow. super late, Tim. I get him for free as a backup quarter with up, uh, you know, backup quarterback with upside. Reason I like him so much is they got Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy, one of the top prospects coming out of college, good good runner. You know, he's a plug and play right here. And not only that, they've got Cortland Sutton, big body receiver. He can catch the ball, you know, in the end zone. They've got Noah Fan who could also catch the ball. They got Melvin Gordon. He's got a lot of weapons around him here, man. Mm-hmm. So. You know, and we met him. I mean, we remember his uh, his agent was saying he's the best rookie out of the draft. I mean, we got we can't believe what the agent said. Right? I, I kind of remember him coming in <laughs> cocky, rocky, having yeah. a little posse with him and stuff. Nah. Yeah, anyways, you mentioned my guy too, Jerry Judy. I'm going Jerry Judy here. He seems yeah. to be going around nine ten right now. Yeah, I think it's great value at that. <laughs> it's not bad at all. I like him. All right, uh, Joe, who do we got here? Lions. Yeah. Now the guy I like here is Hawkinson. Now he's a late. I looked at him. Yeah. You know, he's battled some injuries. He didn't wow us last year, but there is some upside here with the Hawk. You know, as a backup tight end late, why not? He's a sleeper. I agree with you. I mean, I kind of looked at him, but I ruled him out. I wanted to go with something a little more reliable here, so I went with old reliable Danny Amendola. Ah, boring. I don't know Bo- why. Like I know he's boring, boring but he's he's definitely going to outperform where he's being taken. I can't stand those guys, man. <laughs> boring, boring, boring. Old reliable baby. I says I'm not thrilled, but going round 15 or sometimes maybe even going undrafted, he'll give you some good weeks. All right. I, I know uh, Allison just opted out here. Drawn him well. It's not that he was going to be a huge factor, but yeah, maybe Amandola gets some more volume that way. And I love Galladay, but he's kind of under, you know, uh, under quarantine right now or whatever he is. So, all right, let's move on here. Hopefully. Hopefully everyone's okay. About two weeks to heal up, hopefully, from their situation. All right, Packers here. This is I got a couple sleepers here. I'm just going to give you one. Alan Lazard here. Boom. Both of ding, us. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, yeah. Both of us. And I'm going to say here, honorable mention, Dylan. Do not sleep on A.J. Mm-hmm. Dylan. But we're going to talk here about Lazard specifically. Wide receiver, too. They did not acquire another wide receiver in the draft. Shows me they believe in Lazard. Geronimo Allison shipped off and now is, you know, sidelined, obviously, or opting out. But uh, Lazard here... I love him. Yeah, love being taken so late. So like 66. Uh, absolutely. 66 on the cons- sheepsist rankings, on the consensus rankings. I love him. Yeah, like I, I would think he's typically going around 13, 14th round. Like that's, yeah. a, that's a crazy value for Lazard. All right, next one here, the Texans. It's got to be Cooks for me. I mean, you could say David Johnson in the third round or fourth round, but again, I think Cooks is even better value. Technically, the wide receiver won. You could say concussions are going to be an issue. I think he's going to be okay. He's got Deshaun Watson, 150 to 160 freed up targets with uh, Hopkins being gone, Watson, Cooks could be a connection this year. I like it, Tim. Okay, so here's where I am taking a a handcuff, a in case DJ can't perform sort of guy. I'm taking Duke Johnson. Oh, no. No, DJ I, is the I workhorse. love DJ this year. Believe me, I want it to happen. But if it doesn't happen, I want his backup. Our first show in the studio is pissing me off, so I get to punch him out after the show. I love DJ. <laughs> Guys, I've been saying it. I love DJ where he's going. If I can pick him up in the third, fourth round, I'm so excited to grab him. Um, but... I got to have his backup. I'm sorry. Not bad. I got to do it. Duke could get some volume. All right. Indianapolis, Michael Pittman here. Now, what's so intriguing about him is Frank Wright has come out and said that he is the, he in his opinion, and that's why they drafted him. In his opinion, said he's the best wide receiver out of this draft, which is crazy to say, considering they were were amazing guys like Justin Jefferson, Judy, uh, all these guys, CeeDee Lamb. But Pittman's a guy that they, listen to this, picked him with their first pick. In the second round. This was the guy they picked, I think, ahead of Jonathan Taylor. So they believe in this guy, and they don't really have wide receivers that are going to wow. Now, Hilton's been dealing with injuries. I like Hilton in the fifth round. 
as a sleeper. You know, I still think he's a sleeper with good value. But Pittman is currently sitting 65th in PPR wide receiver rankings. You can get this guy free later, who's technically wide receiver two with Rivers throwing the ball. Now, Rivers, again, about seventh in attempts Mm -hmm. going back in 2019. So we know the guy throws the ball a lot more. One of the problems was the O-line wasn't as good as it was going to be in Indy now. So he's going to have more time to throw the ball. He's going to have a better offense, in my opinion, all around. He's got, you know, Jonathan Taylor there, who I think is going to be an absolute stud this year. He's got the veteran experience of T.Y. Hilton. And I think Pittman could really, really shine. I mean, I know they've got Pascal there. They've got Campbell. But I think Pittman's going to be the guy there. I got nothing to say. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. I agree 100%. Yeah, it makes sense. Why not? I mean, he's free later on as a wide receiver, too. And you're kind of a Rivers fan a little bit, aren't you? I I do. I like Rivers. Once again, slow, boring, reliable, not exciting. (laughs) He's my kind of guy. He gets it done, though. (laughs) He gets it done. All right, uh, let's move on here. Jacksonville. I couldn't find a sleeper here that caught my attention that I would want. But I think Shark is still considered a little bit of a sleeper. Wide receiver one who's going to get the volume. Has that rapport with Minshew. I think this could be good here. I think he's going to be a real good steal in the fifth round, but I couldn't find a sleeper that really caught my attention or I would want it. I, I agree, and I'm not thrilled with Minshew and his throwing numbers. I also, I went D.D. Westbrook. I mean, oh, yeah. Cause he's, just because he's going so damn late. So even if he puts up, you know, even if he gets 700 yards this year, that'll be amazing. So yeah, it's West, unfortunate. Westbrook yeah. is not on my roster. My, my start was not thrilled with any sleeper. All right, we're halfway through here. Just want to let you guys know again, head on over to manscaped.com, Tim, and get shave your balls. That's all I got to tell you. Stay groomed. The women will appreciate it. I don't know if they're going to like you constantly saying No, no, they're okay with that. No, 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 no. Manscaped said that they're very open. I mean, that's what it's all about. We know what manscaping is. Oh, yeah, you got to get right in there. So so basically, guys, manscaped.com, use the promo code SHOWERLION. It's going to be great, man. You're going to feel really good after you come out of the shower. You get to trim the bush. And you know what they say, if you trim the bush, the tree looks taller. You've heard that one, And right? just watch the taint. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put a clip in it. All right, Tim. So let's move on here to the Chiefs. Speaking of uh, trees, Hardman is my sleeper for the Chiefs. Okay. Isn't yeah. that ironic how it just fits? Hard man, get it? The, the pun? All right, so McCole Hardman's a guy who I think is going to be volatile game in, ga- game out. Mm-hmm. And the thing about him is that why would you invest in Tyree Kill in the second, first round even, sec- early second, when I can get Hardman later, he's going to be just as volatile. I like Tyree Kill from a end of the year perspective from what he could put up Mm -hmm. but from a game by game basis where he's gonna have a 40 point game and then back down to like a 20 point game i'm gonna stay away here from uh from from tyreek but hardman's appealing later absolutely i said mccall hardman or even sammy watkins just because they're both really late round wide receivers There there you go uh next one here the chargers doesn't really appeal to me here but joshua kelly now with melvin whoa whoa, where we go here did you forget that the raiders have moved to Las Vegas. Did we say that? They're no longer the Oakland Raiders. We didn't talk about We're the Raiders We're going alphabetical, We're, though, and you I'm just on, jumped to the Chargers. But L.A. Chargers. Uh, Las Vegas. L-A-S. Oh, okay, all right. Tim's going to be... You know. <laughs> oh, my God. We don't go alphabetical for you to jump. I know. Well, let's just... Whatever. Let's go Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> okay. I got it nobody. It sounds so weird to say, too. Las Vegas I'm, Raiders. I still call them Oakland. So um, <laughs> I, I'm personally saying take any of the receivers just because they're all ranked so poorly. Um, Ruggs is the highest at like late ninth round. You know, everyone keeps talking about Renfro. I mean, yeah, maybe in PPR, but again, I'm not sold on Carr. That's this is the yeah. problem. Ruggs is going to be, I think, one of those volatile guys. I think he's going to have really boomy type games. He'll you know catch a deep ball for a for a touchdown maybe, but I'm just not sold on this offense at all. I mean, Josh Jacobs is the only guy I like here, Tim. No, you got Waller. Take the, yeah, you always got to take a tight end on. Uh... The Raiders. But again, Renfro is the only sleeper I see here, Tim. Other than that, no. Yep, yep. I mean, I said Ruggs or Renfro. Okay. Renfro, sorry. Yeah. But again, again, Derek Carr is the big uh, it factor for me. I don't trust him. You I don't trust it. him at all. Yep. So yep. now we can move on to your Chargers. Joshua Kelly. He was drafted by the four, in the fourth round by the Chargers. I, I'm stashing this guy. I mean, he could get some volume there. Jackson, I'm not really sold on. I'm not sold on Eckler. You only had 132 attempts. I know you love Eckler. I love Eckler. 
Why? Love what is it? Just a PPR He's, machine. He, he, that's it, man. And we talk PPR. He is a PPR machine and you've been dumping on him. I don't get it. And he replied to it. He didn't like it very much. He was yeah, asking. He said, explain. And I explained. I said, you're not a workhorse running back on my Instagram. If you haven't seen it, go back to my post. Check it out. I'm not sold on Austin Eckler being the guy. And now he's now he's working out doing these one arm push ups and he's flexing with a six pack. So I'm down to arm wrestle the guy. He, he may not do a lot on the ground, but who cares? In PPR, he's making it up, making up for it in the receiving. Did you see that far. picture? Did you see that picture I where he's that. flexing yeah. and yeah. he looks jacked? Yeah. Who would win an arm wrestle? Do you think I have a he, chance? He'd destroy you. Come on. Seriously. You're you're not like a, a muscular guy, but you're a big bodied guy. But he, I think he'd I, still kill I think you. I'd beat him in an arm wrestle. Okay. okay. Anyways, my guy right. here <laughs> is Keenan Allen, who I know once again you hate yeah. because he's oft injured, but still going late fourth, early fifth for Keenan Allen. After last year, he had a great year. I hate the quarterback situation. I don't. I hate uh, Tyrod Taylor. I, I, I hate totally Herbert. Agree with you on that. I hate yeah. Herbert and Taylor. I'm not sold on these guys. Maybe yeah. you know. I'm just not. They're not guys that are going to get it done. They're not going to win you games. But maybe they'll be fantasy producers. I'm just not sold on that that offense. So Kelly's a guy. I think is going to get volume predicated on the fact that Eckler is not a workhorse. They're going to run Kelly. You're right about the quarterback. I mean, I said it depends on quarterback, but yeah. still, Keenan Allen would be my guy here. All right, next guy here, uh, we got, what team are we talking the about? The Rams. The Rams. Now, nobody here, and again, he's sitting sixth amongst tight ends, so I can't consider him a sleeper, but Higby, I think he's a little under the radar, a little bit, but I think he's been going to be safe and solid this year, and I couldn't find a sleeper on the Rams that I, that I would draft. You know why? There's too many overvalued players here. Yeah. There like, is. Like, that's what my note is. My note is too many overvalued players. I guess give me Josh Reynolds, man, who's basically going undrafted. <laughs> 15. <laughs> like, there's nothing here. There's too many overpriced guys. Yeah, everybody is so high on Woods. And Woods is going to be safe and solid, but I just, I'm not going to pay the ADP for Woods. You know what I mean? Um, all right, let's move on from the Rams. There's just nothing really exciting. The Dolphins here. Yeah. Now, the only guy that really caught my attention, I think he's sitting 13th on the consensus rankings amongst tight ends, is Gusecki. I think Gusecki at tight end could have some upside. We got, you know, Tua that could probably take the job later, that could rely on a tight end. We got Fitzmagic, who'll probably, you know, have two good games or three good games and then probably fall off after week four. And then Tua comes in. From what we understand, Tua should be healthy, good to go. I think he's going to gravitate to Gusecki. Now, they've got Williams there. They've got uh, Parker there. It's, you know, I'm, I'm really suspect about this entire offense all around, but Kaseki's a guy I think you can see some volume because he kind of showed some shine at the end of the season. I kind of feel like a little bitch. I'm always going with like late round wide receivers. Preston Williams? Preston. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, Williams could be good. I mean, a lot of people high on him. He had a torn yeah. ACL coming in. The ceiling is there. I see. And Fitzpatrick, I mean, he can have some amazing games. He can put up some huge yardage, but he can also be Fitz tragic. The talent is there. You know, this one This one is going to be like one of those ones that's like, oh, my God, you know, I was sleeping on Williams. I was sleeping on Parker. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm staying away. I just don't like the Dolphins. That's just too suspect for me. And whenever I look at a wide receiver, I look at who's throwing them the ball, and I don't know what I'm going to get. You know, on that end. So yeah. I'm staying away. That's it. Yeah. All right. Next one, the Vikings. There's a ton of sleepers here I like, including Madison, who's sitting 43rd amongst uh, running backs. But the guy I'm talking about specifically is Justin Jefferson. Boom. You got him too? <laughs> I'm surprised we nailed that one together. Yeah. I love him. He was the first pick by the Vikings. They love him. He's a plug and play. There's a void there with Diggs. If you guys don't remember, go back and look. Diggs had a phenomenal 2018 season. I think he had 150 targets. So there's going to be a ton of targets. I was, you know, last year fell off a little bit. But either way, this is the year that you can get a wide receiver and he's going to be an immediate fantasy impact. And I believe out of all the wide receivers, and I could be wrong here, while everybody else is kind of chasing the earlier draft picks, like Ruggs was like one of the first, if not the first, I think it was the first wide receiver that came off the board in the NFL draft. I'm looking at a guy like Jefferson, who's got a decent quarterback throwing him the ball. I think defense is going to be heavily focused on the run mm -hmm. with Dalvin Cook. And I think, you know, Thielen's going to be drawing a bit of the double coverage. I think I think Jefferson's going to be pretty impressive this year. Nailed it, brother. Yeah. All right, let's move on here. Pats, there was nobody here except for <laughs> tight end. I mean, half their team opted out, I think. I think like seven or eight players opted out, maybe even ten. Devin Aziazi at tight end. They know how to draft tight ends. Let's put it that way. The Pats know how to draft tight ends. And we know if Cam Newton gets the starts, he likes tight ends. This is a sleeper here that I like that you can put away on your bench and that's got massive upside. Devin Aziazi, if I pronounce that right. I'm sorry, guys. I opted out. 
No, you don't want anybody. I opted out. No. I don't see a sleeper here. All right, perfect. But I think you got a good one there. All right, let's rapid fire the rest because we're going to be here all day. Uh, Saints, I couldn't find a sleeper here that I like. Jared Cook. Jared Cook, yeah, I was thinking about I him. I mean, but going late round nine? Yeah, that is a steal. He really started putting up some points late last year, so hopefully they figured out that they should start using him more, and he's in there. I got him in one of my fishbowl leagues now with him. It's, he's very touchdown dependent. So I'm hoping that he gets targeted again and gets a lot of touchdowns in the red zone there. I like him as a sleeper as well. Giants, I'm going to go here. He's sitting 43rd amongst wide receivers. And now he is on a lot of people's radars. I hear a lot of buzz around him. I, you know, obviously Daniel Jones is a sleeper, but I'm, I'm talking about Darius Slayton here. Now, Slayton was the number one target getter on the Giants roster last year. I like him here, man. And he could be a wide receiver one on a team that hasn't had a healthy wide receiver. And understand, guys, a lot of the defenses, again, in a similar situation to the Vikings, are going to be focused on Saquon Barkley. Improved O-line there. Love Barkley, but I think Slayton's a guy that's going to get fed. Uh, and I personally think you could go with any of the receivers because none of them are going till at least the mid-ninth. So yeah. <laughs> pick up a wide receiver one in the mid-ninth. You know, why that's not? Crazy. Take uh, anybody. Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, I don't care. And that's the problem with the consensus, Tim. They just basically buy the recency bias. So a lot of these players that are popular and did well last year being drafted earlier and there's a ton of hidden gems here that we're talking about here that next year after they perform will be higher up but you're getting them for value here that's the advantage of getting uh, listening to this podcast and getting sleepers eagles i'm gonna go with um jalen regor here he was a rookie you skipped the jets again well that's just a word yeah i know Uh, we'll get back nobody cares about the jets Notice how I'm skipping teams that nobody cares about all right let's move on let's just let's go to the jets okay so jameson crowder Round 9, 10, wide receiver one on the team. Why not? Again, I'm not. I'm bored of him. I, I'd rather get the upside of Denzel Mims. Okay. Second pick for the Jets. So, I like him. Eagles here, Jalen Rigor, he was their first pick. They needed a wide receiver. The other wide receivers I don't trust. The only problem with Rigor, I find, is Carson Wentz's health. And number two... Um, so, you know, you don't, you know, imagine he builds a rapport with Carson Wentz. They do great all season. Then Carson Wentz breaks his leg again in the end of the season, which he always does. Uh, so I'm thinking here, Rigor, but again, you got to contend with the tight ends who also get force fed. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still just saying Alshon Jeffrey or Deshaun Jackson. I don't care either one of them mm-hmm. like late ninth round or better. Yeah. I'm not sold on those guys. Steelers love this team. You got Claypool Johnson. I'm going to go with Deontay here. Yeah. I knew it. Deontay. I, I did too. Yeah. I mean, Juju not really sold on him being the wide receiver one. Maybe he draws some double coverage. Maybe he doesn't. But Deontay, man, had a great year last year. And he, was, he wasn't he was even being targeted probably with the back quarterback play. So yep. I'm I'm excited about him. Yep. Uh, who are we at? Seattle? San Fran. Oh, San Fran. Okay. The only guy here, I mean, Debo apparently is going to be missing mm-hmm. a few games. But I'm looking at Brandon Ayuk. Okay. He was the first. Uh, he was their second pick, I believe. For the 49ers in the first round, the 25th overall, they got the wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk. I think he's going to be a plug and play. But again, with the 49ers, they spread the ball around a lot. I don't know if he's going to be focusing on Ayuk that much. Be interesting to see. I'm going with Mostert. You okay. know, RB1, round five. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why Take not? a look at him. The numbers oh. should be there. <clears throat> All right. The Hawks. Who do you got? <clears throat> Hyde. <laughs> yeah you know and again this is the main reason it's funny you say that because i don't like Hyde at all but he's going to be a pest oh big time to chris carson so yeah. i mean a thousand yard rusher last year's i think he had multiple thousand yard rushing yes. seasons he's not good but he's good enough to be a pest for fantasy dude come on a thousand yards multiple years on I don't, different teams this guy can get it done on the ground he's boring he's just above par at best he'll get the tds he'll get yardage he's gonna put up good enough numbers man and he is going late yeah i'm going with dk metcalf i, I know he's not much of a sleeper but you know i still think he could has a high, high ceiling the only problem with the seahawks is they were flirting with antonio brown so you never know antonio could come in and buzz kill the value of DK, and that's what's kind of turned me off. And not only that, it's the fact that the Seahawks were shopping another guy tells me, like, don't you believe in DK Metcalf? They don't, it's like teams like that that don't have a true wide receiver one. Mm-hmm. Even the Texans, they've got Cooks, but is he really a true, true, true ultimate wide receiver one? It's teams like that that are looking at Antonio Brown. And that kind of bothers me. Now, I do like Cooks still for value, but it still turns me off that they're looking at AB. Right. But why not? I mean, A.B. is still a name. He's still an amazing player if he does come back. But uh, I think a lot of it's just talk. All right. Buccaneers. I got nothing. 
I got nothing. Most, I mean. most guys are <clears throat> overvalued or right where they belong. Now, LaShawn McCoy was acquired by them, which really killed the buzz of Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones. That's a real buzz kill. I hate LaShawn McCoy for fantasy. <laughs> I despise him. I, I, despi- I hope he retires and gets the hell out of there. I can't stand him. And the fact that he's on such a decline, he sucked in KC. I just cannot stand this guy. He just doesn't go away, and he's just there to be in the thorn of the upside of Ronald Jones and Keyshawn. And that goes to show you that the Bucks do not believe in Ronald Jones and Keyshawn. They had to bring in the old crappy running back that's been falling off the past couple of years. Now, a lot of people debate, he's a Hall of Famer, did great on Eagles. Yeah, that was like 20 years ago. <laughs> so let's move on from that. I don't trust him. Anyone? So no one here? No, man, I got nothing. <clears throat> O.J. Howard, maybe. You know, Gronk has not finished a season. I, you know, lately anyway. Uh, so I don't know, man. I, I'm just, aside from Brady, I don't trust this offense. Yeah, like I say, I think either most guys are overvalued or they're right where they belong. There's just too much going on here now. Now we're getting a lot of comments. You don't trust this offense because the thing is you're drafting Godwin in round two and you're drafting, I want to explain this to you. So a lot of people high on Godwin's and Evans, right? They're both in the top 10, but this is predicated on last year. So here's the confusion with the Kinships. I want to explain this to you guys. So Godwin is being drafted ahead of Evans in the second round, mid to late mm-hmm. second round. So why is that? Is because he finished second in PPR amongst wide receivers. He was a top wide receiver finisher last year. So now Evans, who's technically still the wide receiver one, is still in the top 10 only because on default, because he's the wide receiver one on the team. So the Kinshipses are confused. They're like, okay, well, we can't put Godwin under Evans because he didn't finish ahead of Evans. So my question is, there isn't enough balls, I think, to go around in Tampa Bay to make these guys both viable wide receiver ones. And if you look at the history of Brady, he doesn't really make two wide receiver ones you know, two two wide receivers, wide receiver ones are top 10. He usually throws to like a tight end. You know, the the running backs get some volume as well. I think it was um, White had about 95 targets. So he's heavily, you know, in the passing game, right? So he's going to be throwing the ball to the running backs. So my question is, you're wasting, you know, why are you wasting a second or third round pick on a question mark on who? What do you think on that? Yeah, you agree? I agree. And, and I mean, I'm just... It's basically New England 2.0 right yeah. now. Like we used to tell you, stay away from everything New England. Yeah, yeah, they have some amazing players and some great guys, great offense in general. Same sort of things kind of looking up here now. That you've got Brady there and you've just you've got too many good options. Absolutely. So just yeah, Brady's the only guy I like there. Titans here, I'm gonna go with Tannehill. I'm all over him this year, sitting seventeenth on the wide receiver rankings or quarterback rankings. I love him. Okay. You, ju- you jumped again, so I was going to jump on you, but we'll let it slide this time. We'll go back. Um, Tennessee, I'm saying Johnu. I, I hate picking tight ends. I don't like to take a tight end, but yeah, going 13th, 14th round can easily outperform that. You know, He easily. needs to take some TDs from Henry yep. to do it, but he could do it. If you haven't listened to my show as of late, and you guys should be subscribed and listening, Tannehill, again, I did the math, 224 points. Missed the first six games. Let's say he's averaging. He was averaging around 20 points per game. You take 20, multiply it by six. You add that to 224. He's a top three quarterback fantasy yeah. points. Yeah. He would have finished with like 330, 340 fantasy points. And I apologize. I said you went out of order. I'm an idiot. And yes. I, I put a W in the middle of my two teams. <laughs> That's pretty stupid. <laughs> Dumbass. So let's move on to the team now known as. The football team. The football team. We can't, we can't even call them that name anymore because it's uh, it's offensive, apparently. It's offensive to footballs? Off- offensive to everybody. <laughs> the no, the old name. Yeah, yeah. So the Washington beep skins are now called the Washington football. How original is that? Keep it. I like it. I, I think a lot of soccer teams kind of go that route, you know, the Toronto football club and yeah, stuff like why that, not? right? Like, just keep it, man. Washington football team. I love it. Do you have a sleeper here? Um, I guess. Darius Geis. I again, I'm staying with Stay that healthy, committee. bitch. Jesus. <laughs> Come on. I can't trust him, man. And Stay healthy going sixth round. He will be a beast if he's on the field. He just be. needs to be on the field. I'm staying away from everything Washington. Terry McLaurin's appealing to me, but other than that, staying away. All right. Yeah. And I his mean, ADP is rising, man. I see him coming off like third, fourth round now. I think if Geis can stay healthy, he is going to put up huge numbers. So why not take a shot on him sixth round or later? Absolutely. All right, Tim. So that's it, man. This is it. We got a sleeper from every single team. We did it under 40 minutes. That's amazing. But we didn't give a lot of statistical information, but we kind of gave our reasoning why. So I gave some statistics. And there's a lot of information. There's reason. I've done the research already for you. And that's what happens. A lot of people, that's why their podcasts go over an hour. 
because they're sitting there diving. Like, I don't really care. We've done the research for you. So if I tell you, for example, I like Lazard, right? Because I know the ceiling is there. I know the opportunity is there. I know the depth chart. He's high on the depth chart. I know how much Aaron Rodgers throws. I know Aaron Rodgers has a chip. So look at all the variables surrounding why I go with that player. So it's yeah. not just like pulling a name out of a hat. Yeah, we've looked at the big picture. We're yeah. not giving it to you here because there's so much information to give. Yeah. When you go for one sleeper team, we'll be here for about five hours. So, (laughs) all right, man, we're back. Studio's back. Football is excited. And go shave your balls and use the promo code showerlionmanscape.com and get the 60-round draft solution. I kind of need, you know, I need to get rid of this. That'll work. this yesterday, but yeah, I I need the whole body. I will will personally share you my trimmer so you can use on your head. Would okay. you like that? Okay. Where, where do you use that trimmer? <laughs> All right, let's move on here. Anyways. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Smash thumbs up, subscribe, and get the 16-round draft solution, like I said, at thefantasyfootballcounselor.com. Studio's back. Tim, the, Tim's back. We're ready to go. Football season is upon us, guys. We are out. Thanks for being here. It's coming. Take care. Let's go.